viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. So we got this 2011 GMC Sierra half ton here. It's got the big 4.8 liter in it. A uh, guy stopped in the other day when I was working. The money light's on. He has to go on a trip. I know if it was safe. Uh, it had an EVAP code in it. Your classic uh, P0449 for the EVAP vent control solenoid there. Uh, I haven't diagnosed it yet. I did order a solenoid, so I figured I'd bring you guys along. We'll check it out. Pretty common. We'll see what we got. I guess first and foremost, we should make sure that is uh, the only code that is in there. Oh wow, the auto ID actually worked. Uh, let's see, codes menu, display codes. 449. So it's going to be your... Uh, EVAP vent control solenoid circuit. So it's a circuit code. Uh, usually these are just open circuited. Uh, what we can do, uh, we'll pop back in here. We will go to function test, uh, output controls. We'll see if we even hear it click in here. Watch this pit here. Yeah, I don't hear any clicking, so let's go underneath it. So that is the little guy we're after. Uh, obviously, it comes right off. This is your charcoal canister, so your fuel tank is in this direction. Uh, usually what you can do, you come over here and give them a little love tap, and they'll actually start working. It's kind of a quick and dirty method, so I've got it turned on right now. Right, let me turn it off. Oh, no. No, I don't hear any more clicking. We're above freezing. No, I'm turning on and off. I don't hear more clicking. So we should verify circuit integrity at this point. So like I say, a lot of times you can just give them a little whack and you know, away you go. Um, this has got the new style connector on it. In which case I'm gonna need a pocket screwdriver. Yeah, GM has never been able to get this uh, vent solenoid right there. Really high failure prone item. Oh crap. There we go. Good catch, right? Stick that back on there. Let's see if I can get this red lock tab worked out of there. Oh, Shimon, little guy. Urgh, I got her. Two, Eric gets the connector undone. Let's get a little scope on a rope. So this is your connector. Let me turn that light down a little bit so it's not as bright for you guys. And it has the uh, red lock tab that you have to pull down first and then depress the release. So I will get a test light for us. Look at this baby. I got one. My guy, Neil, our snap my guy got us one of these seen the digital version of this on his truck so this thing is sweet and then I don't condone snap on tools by any means trust me they're generally overpriced but I really really like this so that's the number on it it is a test light incandescent test light with double banana jacks now is that sweet or what so you can put just a regular you know uh, clip on either end so that's pretty slick it does come with an extension cord, uh, so you can uh, you know extend it out. I used it the other day to diagnose a uh, brake pressure switch on a Ford Freestyle. I was able to hook it to the pressure switch under the hood, clip it onto the cigarette lighter ground, drive down the road, watch it fail. It was amazing. This was stupid expensive for what it is. I'll be honest with you, it was over $100. I think it was $150 or something like that. I don't know. But supposedly they quit making this a long time ago because, as we all know, incandescent test lights are hella dangerous. So what we're going to do, it does come with a few little probes in the kit. Remember, you cannot use an incandescent test light on a computerized circuit. At least that's what they tell me. But we know that's a big lie. So we're going to... But it only comes with one male probe we need. Two. So let's grab our uh, AES Wave test kit and we'll grab what we need out of that. 
So in case you guys haven't seen this, I think most everybody has. We use this on our channel quite a bit. Uh, the AES Wave Kit comes with lots of goodness in which you can hook to banana jacks. So we will grab two of these little guys. They should be the right size or close enough as far as uh, if they are wrong, they'll be slightly too small. So we'll just hook one in there, hook one in there, hook it into our vent. If you're going to err with your probes, it's always best to err on the side of having them too small. You don't want to spread these terminals. And these are a smidge too small, but I do feel them catching there. So we'll stick that up almost like it was made for it. Uh, let's dim the lights. Dun, dun, dun. We'll turn it on. And you can see we have a light. We'll turn it off. And we'll turn it back on. So there we go. Our circuit is good. We need a vent solenoid. In just in case you don't have all that fancy pants stuff, this is my other uh, test light I like to use, such as a regular 194 bulb. I took and just soldered two uh, needles on it, put a couple pieces of heat shrink on it, and this works very well too, because you can just come up and lightly touch the uh, two terminals, and you can see you know, our bulb lights up. Of course, you don't want to go jamming them in there. Then you can turn it on and off, you know, with your scan tool. So, another option for you. These are current limited circuits, so if you had a, you know, a headlight bulb in there, it will not light it up. Just FYI. So what we need to do now is just fish this out of here. So we'll get this to release, hopefully. These things can be a real pain in the neck, especially when they get grit and dirt and junk down in them. So what we'll do, because we've got a new one, is we'll simply break, break the old one. So typically you push in on this release and then you slide it off, but like I say, when they get dirt and crap under them, it makes it quite a bit harder. So we'll see if we can't get a pocket screwdriver underneath it. Or once you get it moving, it will release. But I think in this case, we're just going to go full gorilla. Come on, little guy. Perhaps. There we go. So we'll push half of it down, break it off, get that piece out. break the uh, little retaining tab uh, if you uh, need to save it so there's there's the other half of it if you need to save it don't break it obviously just get a blow nozzle blow all the dirt and crap that gets uh, gets stuck up behind it there just full of dirt and whatnot I'll take the uh, little lock tab here turn that out that little guy off. Vent solenoid. I don't know if these have a serviceable filter in them or not, but in this case, the solenoid is what has failed. And we'll get this hose on. This hose runs all the way up to the filler neck, so we'll have to go up in that area and see if we can't get that undone. So inside, inside the box is the filter mechanism, and what we have to do is we have to release these two tabs right here before you go up inside the box and then just push those through. Now if we go in there, our filter will be released. And there it is, way at the top of the filler neck. So once that's released, you can just kind of, uh, well, we're gonna have to cut that zip tie, I guess. We'll cut that zip tie. Here's, the, uh, here's what that looks like. So that's the filter assembly. And I was just looking on the solenoid for the filter and then I'm telling you where it is. Anywho. Up. Let's see if we can't cut that zip tie. Come here. And there we go. I think that is the only zip tie on this little guy. Because we should be able to we should be able to fish this around now. 
filter it is inside there there's a little uh, little scotch bright little, little sponge now there used to be in the top of the uh, vent solenoid here I don't know if they still have one housed in there or not I would I would tend to think so so we get some kind of some kind of opening device here it's probably high frequency welded onto there. It is, it is not gonna come off. Mm. We'll have to send it to that to show what's inside. Or we can just go get a hammer. Like I said, it used to be a filter in there. We'll have a, we'll have a look here in a minute. Lids off. Here's your problem, lady, because I'm getting light. As we can see, hopefully you can see, this little guy is full of dirt. So our little sponge filter up there does not do a whole lot, because that's what ruins these. They get full of dirt and salt and water, and then it goes into the uh, electric solenoid and sayonara, baby. So we've got our brand new one here right from GM uh, it does come with the metal bracket on it uh, I'm gonna elect to not use it so we're just gonna open up the release tab slip it off and the only reason I say that is because we start fiddling with this bolt on top of the frame it's just gonna turn into a big snowball mess if this bracket here was completely hammered obviously we would change it Off it. it also comes with all of the plastic clips that go on these tubes. I left them right on the brake lines up here where they uh, where they were from the factory. We'll snip those on. We'll clip them on. None of them are broke, and it's just a little bit easier to fish this thing up through. So that's what we'll do. We'll fish. We'll go fishing. clips put back on the ones that are up on the brake lines these little guys as soon as we get it up on the filler neck that way we're not jerking it back and forth and popping them out but uh, being that we're right here and that's on and our key's still on and the truck's still on you should hear this little fella click now so there confirmation I'll back back out we will take and uh, go in here and we'll just clear the codes out of it. Key on engine off. All right, so now we should have no more codes. No more codes present, so we're good to go. Let's finish threading this thing through and we're done. Now one thing I will tell you, when you're putting that, that can, the vent up on top of the filler neck, uh, the easiest thing to do is to click the front side in first. So it's going to be the side closest to the cab. 
because that one's almost impossible to see. Once you get that one clicked in, just squeeze the outside of it as you push it down. And if you can, you know, I have the ability to stick my hand up there and then look on the outside by the fuel filler cap and you can line up the other one and click it in. Uh, if you don't have that, you know, maybe somebody can watch you while you're doing it. Like if you're laying down and reaching up there, uh, like I say, click the front side in first, then the back side. It's a, it's a whole lot easier. You just kind of squeeze it, you know, push down on it and squeeze it until it lines up with the slot and it will, uh, it will pop right in there on you. Um, and then we're just going to take and throw a zip tie around this here just to keep the tube bouncing around. I'm surprised this one lasted as long as it did. Usually these things go bad about Oh, about every two years on these uh, GMs. So super, super failure prone. I think we've done many other videos on it. Uh, they've had countless service bulletins as far as, you know, filter relocation and, you know, different vent solenoids and everything else. But we just put it back in the factory one and we're good to go. That's it guys, P0449 on your probably 07 up Chevy GMC uh, pickup. 98% of the time it is just the vent solenoid. There is the possibility of the driver being burned out of the PCM, uh, which, is, which is pretty unlikely because these can actually short out and still be safe. There is, like I said, there is a current limiting device in the ECM that doesn't allow you know, too much current flow and I believe it will allow it to detect you know, short to ground, uh, short to power, or in this case, uh, open circuit. Uh, I'm not 100% on that, but I do know it is current limited uh, because it will not light, uh, you know, like I say, a high amperage uh, test light. So that's kind of good. So you don't usually have to worry about the drivers being burned out of them, but it's a possibility. And the other possibility is naturally a broken wire. So make sure you test, don't guess, and you'll be good to go. Uh, but if you do guess, put a vet solenoid on it because that's probably the best guess. So what we could do at this point is um, if this light had been on for a long time, I would go through and do a full EVAP check. I would uh, you know, either do a purge and seal with the scan tool or we would uh, just close the vent solenoid and smoke it uh, to make sure there's no leaks. But I know for a fact that this light just came on you know, three days ago or two days ago, whatever it was, just a couple days ago. Prior to that, he never had an engine light on. So I'm not concerned about the uh, uh, you know, EVAP system being sealed. We've had enough uh, good weather uh, to have had run the EVAP monitor prior to that. So it's not like we were sitting down, you know, below zero for, you know, weeks on end where it never would have had a, a drive cycle done. So that's just my two cents on that. But we got to keep rolling. We've got lots of cars out there. In the meantime, check us out on Google Plus and Facebook if you haven't done that. Subscribe to our channel. Make sure you click the bell. Like I guess that's something we got to do now so you stay notified when we roll out videos. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.